Today's video is going to deal with two hot topics in concept art creation, silhouettes and also speed painting. But before I can get into that, I'm going to need to talk a little bit about encoding. So stick with me here. If you were to look at this sentence, we'll be meeting at my house later this evening. The gathering starts at 8 p.m., so I'll talk to you then. There's a lot of information contained there. But what if you had to tell your buddy this information with a cell phone text message? Well, then it might look a little bit more like this. My place at 8, TTYL. So what you're doing here is you're taking your large grasp of writing in English and then realizing that typing on a cell phone is kind of a pain, so you shorten it down. You keep all the necessary information there, but what you're doing is encoding or compressing your language into a smaller, dirtier package. It's not elegant, but it's functional. And generally speaking, the person on the other end of the cell phone is an English speaker as well, and they can decode this condensed version of the sentence into that original, longer version of the sentence. So in this way, the text message is more of a symbolic version of what the conversation is actually expressing. Okay, so what if you were to try and learn the English language, maybe as your second language, and instead of reading books, all you read was text messages? Well, all of a sudden this poses a challenge because you don't know the long version. All you're getting is the encoded short version. So you're missing a lot of the language. This is exactly the disconnect that happens when a person who's beginning concept art will see someone's art like Mike Yamada. He makes these beautiful silhouette drawings before he draws characters. And the problem is, this is the text message, the encoded version of what he's actually thinking about. This is a shorthand for him to remember later, maybe pick a couple of them, and then develop the actual imagined character he had in his brain the whole time. This guy really knows how to draw. He's got very good foundation drawing understanding. He can do perspective and analytical industrial design drawings with no problem. So when he draws a thumbnail, he might be envisioning way more than the final product would suggest. So the problem comes in when an artist sees those final thumbnails and says, oh, that's what I want to make. That's going to be my end product. So they copy the aesthetic style of those silhouettes, not realizing that all it is is a shorthand version of what that artist was thinking of. Well, the next hot topic I want to talk about is speed painting. And this is the exact same affliction. Artists will see a painting like this. It's a beautiful piece by a guy named David Levy. And they'll say, wow, look at that. He just threw some paint down on the canvas. And all of a sudden, there was this sense of a city. It's beautiful. But once again, it's just not the whole story. What looks like paint thrown down on a canvas is really just David's ability to master the media. He has such a strong sense of perspective and color theory, all the things that are necessary for traditional drawing and painting, that when he does a quick sketch, all of that is evident. And when you just try and copy the superficial styling of a speed painting, quick brush strokes, lots of texture, photographic overlays, you'll never be happy with the results. So my advice, as boring as it may sound, is focus on the fundamentals. Work on substance, not style. Because you can pick up style later. That just comes with practice. Your own point of view will come out. But you have to learn how to draw the way everyone else has learned how to draw, from the basics. But I definitely recommend checking out these two websites. David Levy, his art can be found at vileart.com, and Mike Yamada can be found at myamada.com. These guys are great artists, and there's plenty of inspiration to be found. Thanks for watching, guys.